sins and national sins. And we humbly ask you to bless our nation and to bless our president, Donald Trump. Lord, I thank you that America didn't need a preacher in the Oval Office. Was in authority. Father, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, I pray for my president and our president. I pray for I'd like to begin my remarks today by extending our profound thanks and gratitude to the extraordinary men and women of the United States military. Right? They're by far the best and greatest anywhere in the world. There's nobody close. In recent weeks, American warriors executed a daring raid that killed the savage leader of ISIS, al-Baghdadi. He was a depraved butcher who will never again hurt another innocent person. Last night, at my direction, the United States military executed a flawless strike that terminated the terrorist ringleader responsible for gravely wounding and murdering thousands and thousands of people and hundreds and hundreds, at least, of Americans. Qasem Soleimani has been killed, and his bloody rampage is now forever gone. He was plotting attacks against Americans, but now we've ensured that his atrocities have been stopped for good. They are stopped for good. Uh, I don't know if you know what was happening, but he was planning a very major attack, and we got him. We are a peace-loving nation. And my administration remains firmly committed to establishing peace and harmony among the nations in the world. We do not seek war. We do not seek nation building. We do not seek regime change. But as president, I will never hesitate to defend the safety of the American people, you. So let this be a warning to terrorists. If you value your own life, you will not threaten the lives of our citizens. Father, I pray for him and I raise them up in prayer. We come together in Jesus' mighty name. We believe we speak in his body. We pray healing. We pray restoration.